Old School Car Salesman Tactics. Has the high pressure sales methods finally departed the car business? The simple answer is no. And today, we're gonna make sure you know what they look and sound like. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as the Homework Guy, and not the rub, is that the best you can do? This video brought to you in part by the Homework Guy team, home of super high intensity training for car buyers and a very savvy group of auto experts. To the disappointment of some car dealers, we're on a mission to create the smartest car buyers, that's you, out there in the country. If you appreciate the Homework Guy videos and you want to support our efforts, there are plenty of ways for you to get on board and be part of the team. Before we share some of these old school car salesman tactics, we need to be clear about something. People working in the car business claim that all this stuff is dead. It's gone, banished from the car business many years ago. If this stuff comes up, they say, this guy is stuck in the 80s. Yet, the video titled, 30-year veteran salesman tries to take me down, well, it wasn't published in the 80s. It was published on June 13th, 2014, and has 2.7 million views six years later. If it's decades old, why are people still watching this? Great question. Now, here's the key reason we're sharing these techniques with you today. Steve Richards, the guy who published the video, is still receiving thank you notes from salesmen across the country who say he has changed their business. Now, how would he have changed their business if they aren't doing any of this stuff? What's more is that we also have evidence directly from our viewers. Our team receives hundreds and thousands of emails here at The Homework Guy. Tons of stories come in every day, and they include nightmares that sound like the customer ran into a Steve Richards kind of salesman who pulled all of these stunts on him. Having said that, we're sharing the old school techniques still being used in the car business, unfortunately, so you know it the minute you start seeing and hearing it. The customer to my right just test drove a new Ford F-150. He likes the truck, but the price is too high, the trade offer is too low, and yet the salesman is trying to close him on a deal he shouldn't sign. Let's take a look. Okay, Jim, thanks for your patience. The Ford F-150 you picked out, it was your first choice of color, correct? Yes, sir. And it's equipped just the way you said it had to be equipped? Yes. All right. Uh, so we've worked hard to put together a fair proposal for you. However, we understand that you're the judge and jury of what's fair. You know what happens if you don't think it's fair. You get up out of that seat and you walk out the front door and you jump in your car and leave. That's why we made it fair. Okay. Okay, I have to interrupt here. Car trainers refer to this as proactive validation. The salesman is giving the impression that he acknowledges the customer's right to say no, that he can just get up and leave when he wants to. Yet, he won't really be listening to anything the customer says. Instead, the customer's comments will only serve to steer the salesman to another form of closing the sale. Watch for that because it happens several times. Let's continue. So the MSRP is 38,345 with our discount of 12,93, takes it down to 37,52. Your trade, we love it. We'll buy it for 5,900. Please recognize this. When you trade the car to us, this is the amount of cash that stays in your pocket instead of going to the state. So you can add this uh, tax savings to your discount as well. There's the difference. Add back the dock fee, the filing fee, and the taxes, and there's what you're financing. The customer was just lowballed on his trade, and the salesman tries to make it sound like it's a lot better than it really is. Of course, you get the tax savings when you trade in a car. You always do. You still want a fair appraisal, though, right? Let's continue. Now, recognize that any time you decrease the term, you save yourself a pile of money. If you increase the term, your payment goes down. So... With your initial investment at four thousand, your payments will be between six fifty to six seventy five. Now that payment may look high, but here's what it does for you: saves you thousands, allows you to pay it off quicker, and you build equity faster. You have the freedom to trade or sell it sooner. At seventy two months, this payment gets more comfortable and flexible. Comfortable because it's less. Flexible because you can you can always pay it off early without penalty. Enjoy the same benefits you got with a shorter term. The payment at 60 months is the best of both worlds. The payment is significantly less than it would be at 48 months, and you save more money than you would in 72. Circle and initial the payment that works best for you, okay? Right there. We'll get your new truck ready for delivery. What just happened here is a trick that is widely played in dealerships today. Getting you to stop thinking about car price or trade values and focus on payments. 
You make huge mistakes when you do that. Now pay attention. Many of you have heard what's coming next when a salesman doesn't want to let you out the door and refuses to honor a reasonable trade request. No, I want $7,500 for the trade. Okay, Jim, the fact that you want $7,500 for your trade is evidence that you are a perfectly normal human being. Everyone who trades their car in wants more for the trade. I want more for a trade, so that's not a problem. We understand completely. Other than the trade value, everything else works fine. Nothing else will stop you from taking the truck home today, correct? Correct. Okay, well, you're going to say I don't believe it, but when I show you the math, you're going to discover that we're not that far apart, okay? You want 7500 and quite frankly, that's the number. Uh, we hope that the vehicle can be worth 7500 or even a little bit more, make no mistake. So whatever research you've done is good. We'll buy it between 5900 and 7500 Do me a favor, Jim. Subtract 5900 from 7500 for me, would you please? 1600 Okay, so on paper, it looks like we're 1600 away, but we're not 1600 apart. Because remember, punch in 1600 then subtract 400 that's the tax savings you get when you trade it in. So what's the new number now? $1,215. Yeah, $1,200, okay. So it looks like we're 1200 apart, but in fact, we're not even that far apart. Remember, your back bumper needs repairing, okay? For us to use anybody else to get that 7500 for your vehicle, we're going to have to fix the back bumper. Other than that, the car's in great shape. We love it. So if it only costs 600 to repaint, sand, do whatever needs to be done, that would be great. If we have to replace the bumper, it would be over a grand, but I don't think we need to replace it. Let's stick with the 600. That means we're only 600 apart. However, if you decide that it was worth the 600 and make no mistake, 600 is still a lot of money. If you decided that it was worth 600 for you to sell that sucker to yourself in order to get the 7,500, well, the first thing you have to do is what anybody has to do before they sell the car, and that's detail it. When's the last time you paid for a full detail? A couple years ago. And what'd you pay? 200. Okay, so your car has low miles. Uh, you don't need to do much else, but you need to service it, okay? So I'm going to guess a lube, oil, and filter be about $40, right? Yeah. Okay, so if you just invested the $240 because you got such a great car, that would only still net you the $360 if you got $7,500 for it. Let me ask you this, Jim. Is it worth going through all that for just $360? Or can I go ahead and get your new truck ready for delivery? I just need your okay right there. Have you noticed how this salesman does a great job of making the customer feel stupid? I hope you aren't falling for all of this bad math. Notice that the salesman never once said that the number they're talking about is only a trade value. He doesn't want to admit that. He never mentions private party sale values, which are much higher. It's a white little lie, but it costs car buyers thousands of dollars when you fall for it. Let's continue. Yeah, I get all that, but I don't buy it. I want to get 7500 for my car. Okay, I don't blame you there. Would you sell it yourself to get 7500 Yes, I would. Okay, you know what? That might be the right thing to do. And if it is, Jim, I'll help you, okay? When I say I'll help you, though, I'll give you the odometer statement you'll need. I'll give you the title of the paperwork you need to transfer the title. I'll do all that for you because it would be in my best interest to help you sell it, okay? But let's take a look at what you would have to go through to sell it, and then we can make the call as to whether it's worth it, okay? Cool? Cool. Because it's all about the money. Because it's all about the money. Let's face it, the difference between 7500 and 5900 I'll tell you what, for 1600 bucks, I know what I'd do. I'd sell it myself. Okay, I'd like to help you right there because the ad you buy is key. The ad drives phone calls. And the more phone calls you get, the better off you are. You don't want to put in any number in there except your own cell phone number and you don't want to take a chance on voicemail because here's what will happen. Somebody looking for your car, they dial and they get voicemail because here's what will happen. They hang up and they go to the next car because they're looking at probably a list of 75 or 80 cars just like yours, okay? So they make sure that ad is good and you answer all the calls. If you get 200 calls, which is a good ad by the way, there will be 100 who make it through to you. Then there'll be 50 who are interested, then 25 who'll make it a point to come and see you. Then there'll be 12 who show up, okay? Happens to everyone that sells a car. It happens all the time. So, 
You spend some time waiting for people who don't show up. You know what? For 1600 it's worth it. Once you sell it, and you will, in fact, you'll sell it more than once. You'll sell it twice, maybe even three times. What do I mean? It happens to us. It happens to everybody. Uh, someone comes in, they buy it, they shake your hand, they look you in the eye, and they say they'll be back because a car in that price range is going to require financing. You'll never hear from them again, Jim. They see something else or they can't get the money. They don't have the common courtesy to call you, but you will sell it. It takes us 45 to 60 days to sell a used car. Is there a chance it might take you that long? Maybe. Okay, so you'll make another payment, all right? Hold that thought, but you will sell it. Once you sell it, then you won't want any more phone calls because no one ever calls you up after you sold them a car and thanks you for it. They call you up because they want something fixed. So you may want to change your number, but if you do sell it, you're going to make some money. So let's find out how much money you want to discount the truck. Didn't you still do? Okay. Um, <clears throat> you came to a retail car store yet. You're going to put this car on the internet. You're going to have a lot of people looking at it. People that go on the internet, excuse me, on the internet, look to buy from a private seller. Are they looking to pay as much as they can or are they looking for a bargain? Probably a bargain. You think they might want a discount? They might. Well, think about this, Jim, just for a second. You've been doing this for 35 to 40 days. You've had more people not show up than you can shake a stick at. You sold to one guy, but no money came through. By the way, you want to make sure you ride with everybody. The easiest way to steal a car now, not go out after midnight with a Slim Jim. The easiest way to steal a car is to get up on Sunday morning, make a pot of coffee, light a cigarette, peruse the classifieds, and find a car that looks easy to steal and head out the door. You invite them over to show you their driver's license, but he gives you a fake $100 bill, so ride with everybody. But you ride with a nice couple, they come back, they drive it and say, hey, we love it. They say, look, we'd like to pay you right now 6800 in cash, which means they're asking for a $700 discount, the same thing that you asked us for. Is there a chance you might take that 6800 Because it's a lot more than we could pay you. No, I'd be selling it for $9,000. You want to ask 9000 Yeah. Okay, great, 9000 Now you're at 3100 I'll get 9000 Take your 9000 that's cool. So you take 9000 which is 3100 more than we can pay you. That's a heck of a deal because now you're 3100 bucks up. By the way, you've also put your car on the internet at a higher price than any other car on there. So it may cut down on your phone calls, but you know that's okay. You're up 3100 remember? The, remember, remember the tax credit. Mm -hmm. Well, you lose it. Now you're only up to 2700 That's pretty good money, but you made another car payment, didn't you? Yeah, I did. So now you're 2200 up, but you had to do an oil change and you had to detail it. Now you're 1960 up. And you have to fix your bumper, which might be a grand, maybe 1500 Is it worth it taking the next 45 days out of your life to become a car salesman for $460, Jim? Or would you rather have us do all the work and you take delivery on your new truck now? No, I'm not going to sign. I don't want to tell my wife that I didn't get the money that she said I was supposed to get. Well, you can do one of two things. You can take all this paperwork home to her and try to explain it all yourself, or you can invite me over for dinner and I'd be happy to do it for you. You're a great storyteller, Fred. Call me when you have a better deal on a truck and you're ready to pay 7,500 for my car. Have a good day. How'd you like that? All of that nonsense rehearsed for hours in a sales training room. Fortunately for this customer, he saw through it all and got up and walked. Would you have got up and walked? Well, maybe even way back in the beginning? We hope so. When you get treated like this at a car dealer, it's time to say, the 80s called and they want their lines back. Or whatever you want to say. I'm just kidding. Just make sure that you get up and leave. All right, if you appreciated the video today, consider recommending us to others, leaving us a comment down below using hashtag the homework guy. Join our fast growing group of subscribers here as well on the channel. You can email the homework guy team at info at the homework guy.com. 
If you have a car contract you'd like us to review, we do reviews for free. Just add contract review request to the email title and block out any personal information, and we're very likely to get back to you. Just remember, hundreds of emails do pour in to us, so please be patient with us. If you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will be easy to find in that description box down below or on our website. Here's the best part. We don't just help car buyers. 100% of your tips go towards a sponsorship we do for a great friend of ours, Maggie. This amazing young lady is changing the lives of university students with her focused mission of love and kindness, and Maggie thanks you in advance. Just like our team right here at the Homework Guy channel, Maggie understands that you change the world by what you do. If you can't do a tip but want to help us get the word out, the Homework Guy team loves it when you share our videos with your family and friends and encourage others to subscribe to the channel. As our following grows, each and every one of you are playing a role in helping us defeat the dishonest operators in the car business who still haven't learned that fairness and honesty is the best business model. Thanks everyone for stopping by to check us out today. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care everyone.